Hello and welcome back to more AEW on TEW 2020. We're here, second week of February, on our show of Dynamite. We start off with a bit of an upset as Robin Renegade pins Megan. Ah, shoot, I was supposed to make that Britt Baker take the pin. Ah, well. Regardless, Renegade Twins actually pick up a win over the Team DMD. And afterwards, she, you know, Mercedes Monet, she's happy about the win. And the Renegades, they continue to beat down Britt and Megan Bain. Even Rebel, when she shows up, starts to get beaten down pretty easily. And Mercedes ends up grabbing a mic. She makes a call out that she doesn't actually need the stardom people because the CEO is going to prove why she is the boss. And Riho's music hits. And the inaugural women's champion comes out. She's storming to the ring. And Mercedes, she... You know, she's calling off the Renegade, saying, all right, you know what, don't fight, don't fight her, she, we see what she has for us, and Riho tries to get in Mercedes' face, but Mercedes, good bit of height over Riho, because everyone has a good bit of height over Riho. And she talks down to her, but eventually, Riho ends up sucker-punching Mercedes, sending her out of the ring, and she, uh, Re so Riho, you know, it's like a... You know, it's just a, like, probably just a slap, honestly. Maybe maybe we do a forearm shot. Mercedes drops down and rolls out. The Renegades follow suit. And they also leave the ring. And Mercedes, she still has her mic. She challenges Riho at collision for throwing her mic at the commentary team. A match set for collision, Riho versus Mercedes Monet. After this, a recap of the previous Rampage plays. Mark Quinn's return alongside the Godfather. And that breaks Isaiah Cassidy out of the Matt Hardy control. Now he's backstage with the trio, asking the Godfather why he's in AEW. The Godfather says that he knows how the private party are one of the best young teams out there, and that Matt Hardy was just wasting their talent, trying to make them something that they're not. But the Godfather, he wants to foster them as they are. He wants to make them better than they have been by just being themselves. And the Hardys actually then enter shortly after. Matt says, um... You know, he's... What, what the private party used to be was just a floundering tag team, one of the many interchangeable names throughout this division, while Matt Hardy, oh, big money Matt Hardy, was trying to raise Brother Zay and Mark Quinn up to the top of the card. But... Mark Quinn, he's a lot more bitter about things than Isaiah Cassidy. He says that, hey, as we were, as this team, we beat the Young Bucks. While with Matt, we were just nameless background lackeys. And Matt is annoyed, but he walks away without fighting Mark. As, again, Isaiah Cassidy is a little bit more sympathetic towards Matt Hardy. But he still is not really... He isn't a fan yet of the, he well he still isn't a fan of matt hardy but he's more so than mark quinn is what we're getting at uh boy what a match does a blanchard defeat soraya with a figure four delta runs in she attacks soraya mercedes martinez distracts soraya uh what is the so, like, everything because of Soraya. What a shocker. And also, it was a heel v. heel matchup, but whatever. Uh, so, just to explain it, Delta showed up late into the match, and thanks to a distraction from Mercedes Martinez, Delta is able to powerbomb Soraya, eventually giving Tessa the opportunity to lock her in the figure four and end the match. Ruby Soho and Tanil Dash would run out to make a save, They're stopped by Delta and Mercedes laying them out. As Tessa begins to, uh, continues to brutalize Soraya. Eventually Tessa gets a steel chair, is ready to pilmanize the former Divas champion, but stops short as she has the chair around Soraya's arm. Kinda like thinking about it, but more of just sending a message. And so she heads out, Delta, Mercedes Martinez, they've beaten Ru like, Ruby and Tanil are like at the so like they're on the... Uh, they're right at the barricade between the the ramp and, well, the fans. 
So they're they're just against there and kind of just like they just walk through. So an interesting trio for this of uh well so far it seems led by Tessa Blanchard, but she's indicated that she is being controlled by someone else being uh being told what to do by someone else. Evelyn Eddie Kingston is seen backstage at a recent New Japan show after having defended the New J Strong Belt. Against two? I don't know. But he says, Mustafa Ali, Adam Cole, Roger Strong, whoever. Don't think I didn't see all his comments on my belts. Look, there's a damn reason I'm the champ here. And I ain't selling out in order to get to this point. What I've done here is I've busted my ass to be the man that I am today. Working tirelessly at Minecraft, spending years without recognition while all you three Got your calls down to Orlando and got to shine with all the stars. Got to bask in the sun. Got to have fun with all your friends out there. Well, me, I was busting my ass. I was spending all my time up here. I was spending every last ounce of strength that I had to build myself up all for nothing. And now I finally earned that. So you know what? Yeah, I'll let you three fight for these belts. No big deal. I'm not someone who backs down from a challenge. You can name the time and the place, I'll kick all your asses and continue to prove why I deserve everything I've gotten. Adam Cole, whenever you're healed, I'll face you. Roderick Strong, you just got back from neck injury and I'm more than happy to send you back into the hospital. And Mustafa Ali, you think you're this big shot? You think you're this guy who is overlooked by everything? I'm the real overlooked one. But I'm gonna show that I and better than that. Thanks, Eddie Kingston. Uh, Elf I are seeing just having finished watching Eddie's promo, and Roosh just kind of laughs. Says, Eddie, you think that your little championship belts can do much for you, huh? Well, that's not something we'll have to worry about much longer. Better count your days, Eddie. Roderick Strong aiming for your continent alongside Mustafa Ali. Sure, that's one thing. But next week on ROH, when I steal that title from your pathetic little hands, we'll see who just who the dominant championship material in AEW really is. Basically, in kayfabe, because I can't actually book this, I'm going to have Roosh vs. Eddie Kingston in the next episode. Uh, not the one that would be from uh be up i think it would i think they release on tuesdays because they do two tapings at a time but the one after that basically is what i'm going for um if roosh ends up winning in this again kayfabe battle we'll we'll definitely mention that uh after this just a match for a sake of a match uh, but Swerve, we still, we still could, really, they're not part of the story? Huh, oh well. Uh, Swerve is visibly exhausted after his match, but he doesn't get long to rest as Adam Page's music hits, and Cowboy comes out toward the ring, mic in his hand. And Page, he's, ooh, boy, cool shortly after I woke up. I, uh, booked this last night, but, anyways. Uh, Adam Page says, you think you can just get away with trying to make AEW a little play thing, Swerve? Look, I already know how good you are, Swerve. So I'm not going to take you lightly. But there's something that I do know about myself. And that's that AEW has given me the realm to be the best goddamn wrestler that I can be. That I can be someone who can prove to the world that I am that material. That I am someone who can really run the roost. And you know what? This place is not going to be something that you, an asshole like you, can twirl around your finger. So you know what? If you want to mess with AEW, you'll have to do it over my dead body. And so as he finishes, he, you know, mashes Swerve in the mouth with the mic. Uh, Brian Cage, he gets into the ring. He starts fighting off Adam Page and uh, eventually does get maybe a little bit of an advantage, but 
probably Adam Page ends up sending him out of the ring, but Swerve does have the mic. He says that, you know what, Page, he can work towards that dead body, and he can take on Brian Cage on collision. So yes, a Brian Cage match, just what everyone wanted. Uh, after this, we are seen at a state-of-the-art gym, where Hook is sparring with someone, with Kurt Angle watching. Keith Lee's voice is heard, and soon Keith arrives with Xander Lyons. Keith and Xander discuss with Kurt about Zack Sabre Jr. and TMDK, noting that if anyone wanted to know any technical prowess on the level of Zack Sabre Jr., it would be Kurt. And Kurt's like, you know what, hey, it's, you know, I'm glad you think that way, I think Brian Danielson would be better for that, but, you know what, guys, stop, stop your sparring right now, and Kurt tells Xander that he's more than welcome to come and train with them, but Hook interrupts and says that he wants to see the big man in action for himself on a Rampage, which Xander accepts. Uh, debuts Cairo Ward. He's a very raw prospect, but he has insane physicals. I think his lowest physical is like an 88 resilience. Um, but again, he's someone that very raw prospect. Um, I'll try to remember to put in his stats on screen right now. Because again, very raw. Cannot speak to save his life. I mean, his he has what, I think, again, I'm going off the top of my head for this one. For sure he has a 7 acting. This guy is a silent badass. Um, which, I already have enough of those in AEW, but Cairo really is. Oh, this segment. Alright, uh, Christian is seen in his home, offhandedly mentioning that his just-recorded video ought to be able to tell Tony Khan and convince him that the no-DQ cell match was not something that was agreed to, and therefore is an illegitimate match. But he's stopped by a loud noise being heard, and he gets up, he takes the camera with him, it's probably like a, yeah, probably just a camcorder. He takes it with him, he's like, alright, well, he's, you know, he's monologuing to himself, he walks out, and, or he's, He's probably, like, not even out of, like, he's not quite in the dining room yet. When just Nick Wayne crashes through the table. And it, obviously it shocks Christian. He, he runs out. He sees Jimmy Shane, he's, br Jimmy Shane brawling with Killswitch. The camera turns to see Vikingo on, like, so, I mean, what I'm imagining with this is, of course, you have the table below. It's a little bit nonsensical to have a table right underneath a landing like this, but whatever. Uh, and then, again, you have that landing, you have top floor, there's a railing, um, you know, just look, you're overlooking, it's a balcony. You have a balcony, uh, inside balcony. I think there's some other term for it, but I'm forgetting what it is, but you have that balcony. Vikingo's on top of it, presumably Vikingo pushed Nick Wayne off of it. And then, Vikingo probably does a 450 to Christian, and Christian, you know, in order to catch Vikingo, drops the camera, and we can kind of see him brawling a little bit when Adam Copeland picks up the camera and says that Christian isn't going to be able to weasel his way out of anything. And he turns the camera off as we can see Vikingo and Jimmy Shane brawling with Christian and Killswitch respectively. I, I like this segment. Um, I kind of wish I went to... I, if I went a little bit more in-depth than still, but it's doing things other than just promo, match, backstage promo, assault. It's something different, which I need to work on doing a little bit more. So, yeah, and apparently Copeland invented a new catchphrase. Um, I'll find out what that'll be. Uh, after this, Brian Danielson defeats Darby Allen, running knee, another just good match for the sake of having a good match. But right afterwards, Will Ospreay jumps to the ring, joined by the jo jo John Callis? Yes, the John Callis family. Uh, but the BCC, they rush out, they make a save, and shortly after them is Don Callis himself with the mic. He's just out on the ramp as they're brawling in the ring. And very noticeably... The Don Callis family is, I mean, obviously, like, when Yuta is fighting them, they, 
So like, what I'm imagining is, you know, Yuna's trying to fight them, and the Don Callis family is mostly concerned with getting Yuda out of the way, rather than beating him down. Because, now because there's so much fighting going on out here, and I don't just mean at the hands of my own family. I mean, Will or Yuda, you already know how good you are, and you're gonna be out here taking abuse from an old man like Brian Danielson, being ignored by people like John Moxley, and instead having to be stuck with a charisma vacuum like Claudio Castagnoli, and probably like I'm imagining that as he's saying these, there's uh, someone in the, you know, that person that he mentions in the BCC is taking advantage. Uh, you know, they're, they're getting the upper hand. Uh, but anyways. And really, right now what you could be doing, Yuta, is you could be realizing that very potential that I saw in you so early on. Instead of being wasted out there with the bullet, with the, the Blackpool Combat Club, you could be rolling with the Don Callis family, being taken under the wing and being led by the guidance of the Invisible Hand and be the best of the best in the entire pro wrestling world. Uh, and then probably after that, I imagine security would probably come out to break up all the fighting. Um, this might actually lead to a 5 on 5. Um, I am determining whether or not I do that. I think Trios I already think is too much. Anything more than that, oh boy. But Survivor Series makes it work. Main event, Okada defeats Daniel Garcia. Really disappointing match. Uh. And then we just end the show with Joe getting off commentary. He confronts Okada himself. There's a stare down. Joe headbutts Okada, shades of Kurt Angle, and leaves the ring content with his display of authorita. 73 rated show is pretty good. Uh, popular increase 24 regions. We're... We're progress- I'm, I'm happy with shows getting around 70s right now. I'm still trying to build up a main event, uh, because I don't think I have much of one. So, Okada getting some wins out there is going to be nice. Of course, we have Swerve picking up some wins, Roosh starting to get some storylines, maybe winning the ROH title, who knows. But, yeah. Again, it still is a very much work in progress with this roster. But, again, building up the women's division, building up a main event division. Uh, I gotta build up my tag division a little bit more, but whatever. That's something to... I mean, we did a little bit, but whatever. But that'll do it for this time. We move on to Collision in the next episode.